Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week seven, lecture two. In the first two lectures of this week, we are looking at Google Earth Pro, an introduction, so that you can use it for extracting data points and ground control points, GCPs, for your georeferencing. In the last class, we looked at the left side of Google Earth panel, wherein we added some layers, removed some default layers which can consume memory and internet. And then we looked at how zooming in and zooming out can change the date of the imagery. Now we'll be looking more focusedly on the top of the toolbar, which gives us more access and power for analysis. I hope you had time to download the version and install it. If there's any questions on the installation and could not be done, please put it in the forum. However, it is very um, simple to do and a lot of support is there from Google itself. So now we will go back to the tools in Google Earth Pro. I'm going to share my screen. I'll reopen it again, my Google Earth Pro. Okay. Yes, it's open now. Now you could see that the Google Earth Pro screen has come up and we start from where we stopped last time. Uh, I try the village. We'll go to view, reset, tipped. Let's start from the top now. So left hand side, I hope we covered most of it. Uh, most of the basics have been covered. Um, <clears throat> and the bottom part, where it says Google Earth, the uh, trademark. And then this circle thing you see uh, is saying that now it's loaded. But when you zoom in and zoom out, now you could see it change, which means it is updating the layers. So you have to wait for it. So it's kind of like buffering. And then it tells you, is it is it still getting the data or where is it located at? Hmm. Uh, imagery date is given. Um, and then you can also click add. Uh, it says like from where the data is available for this particular location. Uh, historical imagery from 1985, which is pretty good. Uh, and then you have your imagery date. This current imagery, what is the date? And then you have uh, the lat longs um, and then the elevation profile. So you can see that the elevation doesn't change much across the village. But if you go to uh, Western Grass, for example, yeah, so we have this Mano node. You could see how the elevation changes uh, drastically. So you have uh, 6,000 feet, and then here it is 5,000 feet, uh, and then uh, it can go up to 6,500, right? So there's a big 1,000 feet down, uh, whereas uh, in FAA it was only 216, uh, and it didn't change much, maybe one feet, two feet up, down, etc. Okay. So the bottom part, again, it's now you can see this um, downloading the data, now it's installed. Um, and then the last one is eye altitude. 
So from at what altitude am I looking at the image? So if you're flying on a flight, uh, you would expect the same vision at 9,000 feet or 8,500 feet uh, as uh, explained here. So when you fly, they will say 30,000 feet, we are flying, 10,000 feet, we are flying. Uh, so that is the altitude from ground zero. And uh, so that from if 9,000 feet, if you look at uh, down uh, along this Etra village, you will see this image. The size of the parcels and imagery, the pixels and the image uh, data changes drastically when you go up and down. So for example, when you go come down and view, you'll see bigger particles. And that is what you can see here now. So it was initially 8,500. I zoomed in, now it is 3,000 feet. Uh, I can zoom in more. Um, you have to, again, this thing I don't understand, but you have to tilt it a lot. So bear with me. And then um, you can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, right? You can see it's 958 uh, feet. Uh, and then 500 feet, and then you can zoom in as much. Um, so this is um, pretty interesting in terms of uh, uh, where you have the location and uh, data available, right? Um, and it gives you tremendous knowledge about what is happening in a course of time. Okay, so let's say this is the village uh, and this is a lot of uh, houses being built, urbanization we can call, but it's not urban, urban, but building, okay, concrete, roads, uh, cement roads, etc. What we will look at it is in this section, the attitude and how it changes uh, and then how you can add points. So these are points that you could add on the layer and then export it to GIS as a shapefile or a KMZ or KMZL. The KML and KMZ files are kind of default file uh, types from Google Earth, Keyhole, um, Map L, and then MZ. So you can have, uh, for example, uh, I'm going to mark the school. Uh, and then this is a school location. So I could say that um, I can take a point. Uh, when you click the point, it will just randomly place it in the center of the screen. Initially, I was also very difficult finding it to change the location, but it was as easy as, so if you can move this box, you can move this box also. So let's say this is at a school. So I'm going to type E, T, T, then you have to click here. E T T A R I school. The lat long is given. Style color. You could choose for the label at the icon. The icon is this one. It's already uh, taken as yellow, which is okay. And um, you could you could also select different uh, types. For example, this could be uh, a school. Um, you can import your own styles, add custom icon, which is your images uh, that you can take like a water droplet uh, I have used in the past. Uh, but let me do the school here. Okay. And I say, okay. And I say color, label size. So at a school label size is given. View is uh, where do you need to view it? Central view or altitude. Climb to the ground is a kind of advanced. Don't don't need to push it in. So now you can see that the places has been stored in my places, right? So for example, I'm here. I'm just going to a location in um, out of the world in Australia. Okay. So I have four location points. I've clicked. It comes to this uh, the Murray Darling Basin. Uh, but now uh, I want to go back to Etre or some, so, but. Each time zooming in, zooming out, instead of that, you can have these points. So the points can directly take you to just double click. It zooms out, goes to that location, flies in and zooms in. The beauty here is it looks as if you are flying because the visualization is done like that. It's not like just cut and then you, you enter in your tray. So it zooms out like takeoff and then it flies. You can see through how it flies and then it goes in. The other beauty of this is it's not only in the land, but also the data is available on the oceans and seas. So all the water bodies are, are uh, being mapped. Not only the inland water bodies, 
but all the water bodies because again the satellite is covering the global part uh, what it can do is when you go into the oceans and seas uh, the be the best data for that part will come up uh, for example this is the coral reef uh, between um, um, uh, india and sri lanka right and there's a lot of damage to this because of pollution a lot of fishing um, and then activities uh, global warming also so ram setu this is the one and then you could see that how this has uh, been uh, populated over uh, time um, some imagery is not as as close you can see that it doesn't go as much in detail as in this one right um, and then it's like a bridge they say because it, it goes ups and down and then there's a sand dune so people used to um, get stuck in those when they try to swim across uh, during during uh, tension times uh, but yeah so this is Danush Kodi and then this is uh, the uh, Sri Lankan part where they were connected initially um, kind of if you look at the coral reefs and stuff so as I said both in land and in water there is data available so you'll have a full global picture of the planet and you have also the Arctic zones, Arctic and Antarctic. Okay, so North and South Poles are also taken uh, very clearly, and uh, you can see like um, the Greenland and other aspects are also taken. So if you do too much of spinning and don't know how to uh, recenter it back, don't worry. You can just double click on either of it; it goes to the center and then uh, you can have uh, more access to the data. So Greenland is shown. Let's go back to the village. The boundaries are being input by uh, a source. We don't know which source it is. Not all metadata is shared. Only the satellite imagery is shared for, for now that is important. And the labels and names, as I said, uh, the, the sources are not given. However, they are more accurate more or less accurate okay so so we created a point and then let's say we want to create a polygon for it right the village okay so i'm going to create a polygon for the housings uh, points of the village so what i did is i clicked on the new polygon so the first template is if you don't want to see the panels because it is taking some space real estate we call them in viewing the image you can click this or click it back comes up uh, the first point is we did the point file where we picked a location, let's say the school, and then map the school, um, which is good. Now we're going to map the urban development or the housing development in the village, which is a polygon. It's an area, right? And then the last will be the roads. So let's say I'm going to click the polygon and call it at array uh, housing. Say it's okay. And then we start clicking suppose i click without saving it you can it's okay just right click on the sh shape file kind of uh, thing on google Earth, go to properties it starts to edit by itself okay so now as soon as you open it and then say properties it edits so now i'm going to make the file I hope you understand that there is a lot of regulations in uh, even la uh, uh, land using in villages because not all land can be converted to urban settlements uh, or uh, any type of settlements uh, because uh, they they still need to preserve the vill villages in India. If ever anything gets um, overdeveloped, then there's a big strain on uh, the few food producers and uh, water accessibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Suppose you did it wrong, it's okay. Just press the backspace. Uh, you can see that if I'm pressing the backspace, it it goes out. Um, okay, and then you could also do a this draw. Keep on drawing. Like just hold on to the left uh, for key the pointer and then click on doing it. Okay.
Now we have connected it. The polygon is done. You say, okay, and see it's closed, right? As I said, if you want to edit it again, go to properties, style and color, width is, let's say red. Okay, and then custom is three. Okay, now you see the boundary, much, much more visible, right? Okay, so this is how you make a polygon out of the uh, location. In certain aspects, you also note that the lengths and breadths are same. Which you can use for georeferencing. For example, if you know there is a cricket field, let's say Chepa, you know that exactly the pitch is 22 yards. Same if you go to a stadium and you know uh, the running track. The running track has uh, same dimensions. You does you cannot change it. You can it's not like hundred meters, five hundred meters, uh, etc. It is a constant track because it is done for. Uh, noting the time and speed and accuracy. So those can also be used to understand the distortion of the image. So the image has been distorted. Good. So we have created a polygon. The next is lines, add paths, uh, which is a line or a polyline. So I'm going to mark the roads, um, especially the inner rows of the basin of the uh, parcel we have, because the outer roads are more uh, for the buses and stuff. Whereas the inner roads um, were done for the people. For example, these are tar roads. However, these are cement roads. So now you could see that uh, we can mark one cement road is enough. So I'm going to add, let's say, and then as I said, as we did for the um, other part, we can also drag and then do, let's say, it array. Inner road style color, say it's brown, it's okay, and we said okay. Okay, so as I said, anytime you want to change, you can easily change. For the property style color needs to be thicker. I think the red one you can see, but the green one. I'm not able to see it. So let's say make it five. Say okay. So now you could see it uh, better. I would double check with the color also. Let's say let's do black or something. Okay. Now you could see it, right? So you have added a shape file kind of uh, version in Google Earth Pro, which is your uh, boundaries and a location and a road path. Uh, if you want to edit, you can go here to the left panel and edit it. Um, and always you can uh, re-edit and put what you want in terms of uh, view, style, color, measurements, etc., etc. You can convert the units also here if you want to measure the units. Uh, all all um, probable Measuring schema has been done, so you can use anything. Okay, so these are the dominant left-hand um, tools that you can see on the top of the Google Earth Pro. Uh, now we're going to jump to some advanced, which is may not be needed. So now this is add image overlay. Uh, as we had done in the past, uh, uh, when we did the image, some people have taken a photograph and then added it. This is where they add it. So you can say click image, uh, and then where do you want to click? You can click a point uh, and then upload it from your uh, data data image. Add a link, add web image, or add local image. Add local image will go to your folders, uh, and then you can pick an image and put it in. Okay, View, altitude, refresh, location, all are same as different. Uh, but again, we are not going to do that. Uh, but it does come handy. When does an image come handy is when you take an image of a crop. For example, and then you want to show that how the crop is growing, we can do it. Let's say, for example, PNAU Agri uh, Cultural Field, Agricultural University, Tamil Nadu Agri. Okay, and let's try. Let's try to see how much of uh, imagery has been put. Okay. 
So let it load. Um, see now it's loading. You can see it's loading. And uh, there it is. So you can see a lot of images popping up. Um, and these images are very, very uh, important in Tamil Nadu Agri uh, because they give a, an understanding of what the crops they're growing, those kind of things. So this is Tamil Nadu Agri University. So you can see that if I click here, uh, you can see a department's image, uh, a department uh, where it is. So this is where you could also add your part of imagery, right? So these are the growing fields, uh, agricultural fields that they grow uh, for uh, plot level assessments and those kind of things. Okay, then you have your hostels, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So these are very helpful. If you want to add, uh, for example, an image of a crop, we'll be doing that very focusedly when we do the uh, Bhuvan and Abad uh, website. But for now, you could know that you could go and uh, pick a location and then see if uh, there is uh, imagery on the fields and stuff. So these are fields. These are agricultural fields that you can take. Uh, so for example, there's an imagery someone has added, uh, the government school, uh, but it is their personal image taken from somewhere else. Uh, this is not uh, at right, but he says that I'm from at right government school, which is good. But again, as I said, the, the, these images can be misleading. He has taken an image from Tanjavur, but put it in uh, Trishapali, which is two different districts. So you cannot have that as um, an authentic image. Okay. So that is where this one comes. And then the last one is to, if you want to make record a tour. For example, you are zooming in, zooming out, and you want people to see it as a presentation. Um, so now it is recording. Okay, You can say stop recording. Uh, what I'm talking can also be recorded. Uh, and then you zoom in and say, for example, let's do it. And, and it's recording now. So now you can see the timer going on. You can say, OK, this is the Atrai, the village um, of my ancestral home. Uh, my father went here, all these things you can say. And then you can say that uh, I'm zooming into uh, the transportation area, uh, the school, uh, the grandfather's house, uh, all these things. So now I could stop and it's been recorded. You can save it. Okay, you can save it. Now I'm going to play. See, I'm not, I'm not moving the mouse, but it is moving by itself because I recorded it. And you remember that I went down and said, this is my road. So that's where it's going. And then it is going down to the grandfather's place. Okay. You can trash it. You can save it if you want. Uh, let's for say safety, we can say this tour is being saved. Uh, so for example, you want to show the village profile to a collector. You can quickly take a, a tour like this download it and then send them as a video uh, which is self-explanatory um, and to any government official okay so i'm just going to click okay it gets stored here in your my places when you open it you can do it if you want to restore it again in your in your uh, folders you can save place as and then a tour uh, you can do it the locations everything okay so it goes back to your folder Good. So now we have looked into the uh, these profiles. Now this is the part where uh, I said you have to close this so, so the other tools open up. So now all the tools have opened up. I've closed the um, video tool. Uh, now most important is where, as I said, students may lose their time. Uh, this is one of them. Okay. So you you see the the planet. Now if I click it, be amused that I can go to Earth. So this is Earth. From Earth, I can go to the sky, Mars, or Moon. So uh, one planet is there, Mars. One satellite is there, which is the Moon, uh, and the sky. So you can just spend a lot of time just looking at the sky and Mars. So now the Mars is loading. Let's go to a planet first. So this is built on the imagery taken by satellites and the rovers. Uh, like, for example, so this is the same thing, like in Earth, but now you're in Mars. You can go in. Let me turn on the... Um, so here you can see that different layers have come up. These are the rovers. The rovers, which mean uh, where the US sent the robotics uh, vehicles, and then it went in and uh, searched for uh, life, life on, Earth, on Mars. 
again they they are searching mostly for uh, life form plants water everything so that they can do agriculture in mass and then try to build a house in mass um, I, i'm always going to be saying that for that funds and money we can still save the planet earth uh, which which definitely needs a lot of money and stuff uh, funds to to make sure that everyone gets sustainable development rural development etc so here you can see high high resolution images of nasa and other parts so these are very very high resolution images it's getting loaded still you can see it's spinning uh, and you have a lot of galleries and images etc you can also do a terrain analysis of how it jumps and, and shifts uh, but let's not waste too much time on this uh, because this is not part of the course but as i said uh, people these are craters on the mars so the people may get um, students may get uh, intrigued on how this is done and why we have so much uh, images and and parts so the, the the rovers the satellites are always monitoring this so these are the high high resolutions maybe they thought this was like a dried up river and so they wanted to study more uh, and these kind of things are there so we have the phoenix lander okay the phoenix lander uh, landed here so uh, uh, and then you have the uh, rovers the rovers landed here you can see that how it's it's picking up and the uh, you can also do a live mass you look at the left hand side what you can see the satellites are always monitoring and so you can always see it okay enough of mass now let's go back to the sky so this is the sky above the earth uh, where you can see the stars constellations the the uh, galaxies um from a far away angle so you can see how um, uh, you know um, observatories um sky um, all these terminologies can be sent so these are the galaxies that uh, if you want to see you can go in and see in detail uh, it takes a lot of memory and and uh, internet so just make sure that you have a good bandwidth when you do this um again so just how beautiful these are the satellite telescopes that are taking image of the sky um, and uh, much much bigger planets and suns than ours so it's just taking the other uh, galaxies um, etc so there is also a tour th that has been done um, for example that like we did a tour for eta ray you can do a tour for the sky good now uh, the last part is the moon so i'm going to click the moon um and you could see that it is zooming into the moon um and then you could see similarly like where the moon um rovers landed and the uh, research was going on the craters etc so this tool be very careful don't use it unless and otherwise you need it i just had to give a 2 minute spiel on it so that people uh, don't know what it is and click and then say oh why is my earth turning red or why is the planet turning brown okay or black like here okay so this is a tool you can always come back to earth by clicking it and click earth we'll come back to earth now for initially i took a plane from atarai to uh, tanjavur back and forth or even to australia back and forth then we took a rocket to mars and and um, uh, moon now we are back to earth okay so let's click atarai now all our say selected uh, features are again back uh, so let let this go in and i'm going to do two more tools which are very very important um go to view go to reset tilt so one of the most important is the measurement tool so this is quickly done for example this is a scale you can do a line path polygon circle 3d 3d polygon for us the three uh, important are line path and polygon uh, and circle also is important for example let's do a line uh, i'm going to measure this road length so from here i click and then from here i click that's it so two points what is the uh, length it is map length is 0.3 kilometers or meters uh, 129 meters ground length head fine so this is a quick way of measuring the distance between uh, let's like say this is the school uh, yeah this is actually the school and this is the house so they have to walk 120 meters uh, every day up and down which is good right so then you can do a path let's say uh, this path is not accessible so you have to go like this come around go like this 
Then go inside, come around, go to this route, up, down, and you're in school. So now you see that you can do a path, a perimeter, and then that is 400 meters uh, length. So this also you can do quickly and then save, uh, if you want to save the, the uh, path, you can do the path uh, and then it goes as a path. Click the ruler again, then you can do a polygon. Uh, let's say I want to measure the size of the school. So I'm just going to click the, the boundary of the polygon. You could see that it doesn't uh, come as a, a, a space as a road. It's not a line, it's a polygon. So it's always closing the loop. Now it's as close and it is. Perimeter is 340 uh, meters and the area is 0 0.01 square kilometers. You can also do it as hectares, uh, square meters, whatever is, is, is the unit you want. Then you can quickly note it down, okay? The last one is circle. So you can click and then enlarge. So this is a circumference of uh, radius of influence, those kind of things. For example, and then you clear. So whenever you want to restart again, you can clear. So for example, I want to do this circle. So let's say center of the school as a center of the circle. Then you go out. So right, left click, and then move the mouse out if you go out. So now you could see that the influence of uh, the school is, you can say, let's say this is the influence of the school. The radius is 200 meters. So within 200 meters, how many houses are there? Now you can physically count, or you can count uh, what percentage is housing and percentage is land. So if you just leave it, leave it so you can just leave it and see that almost 60 percent is agriculture and 40 percent is housing in this 100 or 200 meter radius and these kids can come here which is which is of ease the kids which are staying far away have to take a cycle bus or something to come Good. So then they have 3D path, 3D polygon, not, not needed for our part. So I'll leave it. So this is email. If you want email this location, the screenshot, you can click OK and email it to your, yourself or to send someone. Uh, you can email the view, etc. But the easiest way is also you can click on print. You can print an image a map of this. Uh, see the print. It takes a little a uh, couple of seconds, let's say it took two seconds, three seconds. So this image can be <clears throat> um, uh, downloaded. Let's say this image uh, is the title. If you want the title, or uh, we know that it is Etarai Village. Okay, so that is the name uh, that will come up here. The legend is what, uh, what are the uh, tools that, um, what are the markings that there are in the map? Uh, and you can adjust the map to center it and all those stuff. Once you're happy, you can print it or save as a PDF. Uh, and to save as a PDF, I'm going to put it in my GIS course. Let's say ETRI image. Okay, you can save. Uh, depending on the resolution, it takes time. If you had a high, high resolution, I'll show you how it is. Uh, then you'll have a bigger uh, time to take. So it, it is going to take some time. It is done now. So now it, it says map options. Page setup, you can click how, how you want to print it. Map options, entire map, whatever you want. If you don't want a title, you can take the title off. So it goes off, I'll put it back in. Uh, and then uh, save as PDF, okay? So all these are there. Uh, if you want to print it, you can print it to your printer. Uh, we did save PDF, so it opened like this. Let me open this uh, just for our uh, sake. Uh, once it opens, I will share the... You see, so now I'm sharing the image uh, as a PDF. So you can see that beautifully the image has come. Now you can go into your report, report your thesis, whatever it is, you can, it can easily go in. Okay. So the, now the last uh, and the most important part, okay, if you want to cancel, you cancel, now it comes back to the normal. This is an important button which can uh, take you to Google Maps. If you click it, it just automatically takes you to uh, Google Map. Uh, let it uh, upload. Um, the same location, but now opens in Google Map, where you can do directions and like a Google Map that you use for booking uh, Ola Uber or something. So that is the map that it comes up, uh, which is 
needed for making some distance calculations, etc. So let's go back to our Google Earth Pro. Yes, we are there. So this one is uh, view in Google Maps and then view in Google Earth on web. It's the same thing, but on the web version. It takes a long time, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, the most important tool I would say is this clock tool, which we will spend some time here. So if you click the clock tool, what happens is automatically the date from which the image is available comes up. You remember that in the bottom, you can see in the bottom, it tells that historic image from 1985 we have. So if I zoom out, you may get better image also. Okay. So now the block doesn't come up, but let's go back to Etray. So now 1985 is the image that we can get, which is pretty, pretty amazing uh, given that um, uh, more than um, 40 years of data we can get approximately. Yeah. So this type of image can come. Uh, let's go to 1985 and see how this village performed. As I said, the it is done. So you can see the circle is done, which means the resolution is not good. Uh, those days, satellites were not as high resolution as we have now. But you can zoom out and see, OK, some part is still land. There was not much construction happening. OK, and then when you come here, you can have a play button. OK, uh, it's not going to play. Um, it's not like a play button that plays uh, like an animation. But what it does is it goes to the next available image. So now you could see this boundary that we created for the village. Okay, still 80% is not being occupied as houses at 2010. Okay, so 1985, we saw a lot of brown. Uh, I think there's not much houses. Uh, but then 2010, within um, 15, uh, 25 years, uh, you could see that a lot of houses are coming up. And then 2012, a uh, lot of clearing, all the green color is gone, trees are gone. 2013, uh, some this part is picking up some trees, uh, some houses are bringing back the vegetation. Uh, 2014, let's pull it to 2017 and then just wait for it. Yeah, so now you could see that full uh, constructions has happened. So this is how you could map the uh, boundaries of a village and how it has expanded uh, uncontrollably. Uh, this is very important for your rural development activities also. For example, I said houses, hospitals, uh, health PHCs, uh, primary health care centers, uh, anganwadis for the small kids. Uh, if they don't have it and they have a big village which is expanding, they better have, have more uh, facilities. Okay, And the latest one we have is 2022. March 2022, there's a lot of cloud cover, so we can ignore it, okay? So some images are uh, taken out of the cloud cover. And uh, if I zoom into this part, you can see this part, a lot of agriculture, right? And then if I do 1985, you can still see brown, uh, okay? So yeah, this part. You can see here, that's not much agriculture, right? Uh, maybe it is shrubs, barren land. There's barren land a lot in this area, I can confirm. Uh, but then uh, as and when technology increase, the green revolution and access to water, etc. These fields, look at this, this is not agriculture, right? So, but now you can see that they have been plowed uh, and then converted to agricultural patches. Uh, see the boundaries, you can see clear boundaries, right? Uh, those were not available in the past. So now they have leveled it and then they created these boundaries where agriculture can be practiced. So this is very important tool in um, Earth Pro because you cannot download multiple images in GIS and then wait for uh, an understanding to happen. Whereas here now you know, okay, 2020, I can see clear agriculture. 2015, no agriculture. So what was the image in 2015? It comes here. Okay, Maxar Technologies. Um, uh, so you, you can zoom in Landsat. Mostly they'll use Landsat imagery. This is not agriculture at all. Uh, but now you have good agriculture activities. So the idea is to get this image, max our technologies again, and then do some crop mapping, which will give you the crop yield, water demand, and other aspects, right? Okay, good. So now we have uh, had two lecture courses on Google Earth uh, Pro. Uh, I hope you will use it extensively because it's free open source tool. Uh, and it's a beautiful tool to quickly get satellite data that you can use. I can take a screenshot of this or download this image, which can readily sit into GIS 
because this already has a spatial location data in, embedded in it. So this data can go seamlessly into QGIS uh, as an image and you can work with it. We will look at all these in more detail um, uh, at an advanced level. Uh, I will see you in the next class where we will look at some ground control points from these uh, Google Earth Pro imagery. Thank you.